Oh hello, fifth day of Christmas. Today, how to put all your eggs in one basket, an update on Ireland and gifts for people with ears. So the plan was, I was gonna tell you about a microphone that uh, I thought I was gonna recommend to you. But the more I tested it, the less I liked it, and then I discovered it was broken. It must have been broken all along, which would explain why I didn't like it. So I'm sending it back and we'll talk about it another time. Uh, but I am gonna talk about the microphones that I use because it's occurred to me that I've never actually talked much about sound. Now, I'll be the first to admit I also don't know anything about it, but that's never stopped me talking about photography. So uh, there you go. I'm gonna show you all the microphones that I use and why I like them and uh, why they would uh, potentially make good presents. Of course, they're all sold out now because they have chips in them, so they sold out in August, probably, but I'll still tell you about them. Then we're gonna get to the exploding telescope because last night I, um, I decided it was time I counted the pieces and discovered that some could be reduced even further, so I made a video while I was doing it, but it was just, it went on too long. So I scrapped it, I'm gonna show you the highlights. And then I'm gonna give you the results because I tallied them this morning. If you submitted a guess to that, you probably need to pay attention during that segment of this video. So that covers the, the gifts for people with ears and the exploding telescope and the putting the eggs in one basket, that was the microphone basket. Are you following any of this? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Just keep listening, something entertaining might happen. So good news, bad news on the Arlen front. Good news is they were able to save his leg. Uh, the bad news is the antibiotics have done something horrible to his intestinal tract. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna go into any more details. It's foul though, it's just awful. I'm not visiting him anymore. And I wouldn't let him come on the program, even though he's got a special garment that he can wear. Now, nah, we'll wait. Believe me, it'd be better we wait. Well, I do feel sorry for him, and I, I certainly wouldn't wish that on, on anybody. Yeah, he needs to get on with it. I might do a remote with him uh, if he's still in the hospital, but he'll, he'll be out of the hospital by tomorrow. So long as he doesn't go straight to jail, we should be able to get him on. I got his Christmas present too, seeing as the telescope's a complete non-starter. I got him one of these historic, I think it's for the prostate, I'm not exactly sure. It's got uh, spinny blades at the front. I think it used to have a handle on it and it's spring loaded. It was really a bit worrying actually. I'm not quite sure what Arlen's gonna do with it, but it looked like it was right up his alley. I think this is where you clamp it to your forehead. I don't know, I don't know. It's probably got a book on this. It's a frightful looking thing, isn't it? Probably have to make a video of how it, oh look. That's what it, that's what it's for then. It's a biopsy gun. Yeah, he'll like that. He'll have fun biopsying things. Neighborhood cats had better be on the lookout, mind you. So what were we gonna talk about? Gifts for people with ears. This is a microphone thing. So let's get the eggs in one basket thing out of the way. I was supposed to be reviewing a microphone today. I agreed to review it. And then I used it for a period of weeks and I didn't like it. Uh, so my review that I recorded a couple of days ago when I was editing it just sounded just awful. Uh, I mean, I was saying all the nice things I could say about it, but it sounded like I was about as enthusiastic about that as I would be getting a prostate biopsy from that thing. So I was between a rock and a hard place. I'd put everything in that one basket of doing that review and then decided that I really shouldn't do the review. I mean, I don't do reviews on stuff that I don't like because what's the point of that? It turns out it's more complicated even than that. It's not that I just don't like it. I don't know if I like it or not because it's broken and I didn't realize that. But when I was doing a good exam on it yesterday, I noticed one of the wires had popped loose and was broken. And you can see in this picture that it's got a, 
and not underneath the surface. And I think that's part of it. So I'm sending it back. I'm going to get a fresh one and uh, I'm going to put it through its paces again and uh, hopefully give it a nice glowing review that um, uh, I'm sure it deserves. But right now I can't do that. and I'm not going to give a lukewarm review. Here's a few of the things that I said to show you just how over the moon I was with it. Up until then, it was working pretty well. These microphones are not my favorite. It, it wasn't the easiest microphone for me to use. It seemed to me to be a little um, muddy. So I would say that this is a, a, a solid cell phone mic. Uh, it's, um, it's not as solid as it could be. I, I really am a bit disappointed with uh, the fact that uh, it broke. So it's nicely made, it's, it's solid, it's well put together. It, um, I think it's a, a decent buy. Uh, I, it's um, not inexpensive. Without telling you the name of the microphone, because we'll wait till I review it, you can see how thrilled I was to be uh, reviewing it. So instead I decided, well, I'm gonna review something I am excited about, and that's the microphones that I use because there's plenty of them and um, I use them for a reason. There's one that I absolutely love. So if you have anybody on your list who has a podcast or uh, records stuff for family videos or, or stuff, anything, anything at all that re requires they record sound, one of the things they're gonna need is a microphone. Uh, the other thing they're gonna need is some kind of a recorder. Now, most people will use their camera, which is terrible for recording sound just about every cam camera. The only one I've ever used that actually recorded good sound was, uh, I think it was a Lumix, which is a Panasonic. That, sound, that had a really nice uh, sound recorder in it. But anyway, most of them aren't. I use Zoom. Um, I have the H5N, uh, which is just, I think it's fantastic. I love it. It's, um, it's a great recorder. Uh, but the, the microphones is what I want to talk to you about. Now, when you're on the go, like we are, um, going around and doing outdoor uh, type uh, videos, we need several different types of microphone. Uh, there are microphones that I use in the studio. There are ones that I use when I'm just doing uh, spoken word stuff. Like I, uh, I have a couple of podcasts and um, when I'm doing podcast work I use this other microphone then I have others that I use when I'm out in the field and depending on what I'm doing in the field whether I'm moving around or not will determine what microphone I use there so it is a bit complicated but I'm going to tell you the ones that I use and how I arrived at them and uh, then um, you can use that as a, uh, as a pointer on, on something that at least I like and most of this stuff you've heard me use uh, because it's what I use in all my videos. So we'll start with um, the pro probably let's work our way up to our uh, to, to the best stuff. I, I have a, a whole box of uh, cheap lab mics. These are these are okay. Purple something or other. These are just uh, very standard. Uh, telephone jack, omnidirectional uh, lavalier mics. They're a bit noisy. Uh, they don't have much response, but if you just need a microphone on, on the go, th this, is, this is a good, good thing to have, and it only costs a few dollars. Ne next in line after that, and it's not one I'm crazy about, even though I wanted to like this so much because it would have made my life so much easier. Uh, was the uh, Rode Go. Now, this is the first iteration. This is the one that they came out with, oh, uh, two, two and a half years ago now. Uh, they work great, and they work even better if you put a lav mic into the send device, which you have in your pocket, and use the lav instead of using the built-in mic. But it's okay, and in a pinch, it's great, and if you are in a situation where you're moving around a lot uh, and uh, it's, it's outdoors in the woods or something and you don't want wires hanging all over you, this is a no-brainer, especially if you're recording straight into to something with decent sound because the receiving part can just clip onto the hot shoe of your camera and uh, 
run the wire down to the auxiliary input and you can record your sound. It works up to, I don't know, 100 meters or something. Um, you know, 100, 100 yards. No, it's not that far. Maybe 100 feet, but whatever it is. If you, <laughs> if you can see them in the camera, you can probably hear them with this. The batteries last long enough most of the time, but whenever I take these out in the field, I take a power thing, a power bank, in case I need to recharge these because you don't want to run out of juice and they don't take batteries. They, they have to be charged over USB-C. So these are nice. Uh, the, the sound quality is, is uh, what you might expect from a $200 uh, radio microphone, which is okay, but not just not just brilliant. And the, and the one thing I hate about it is these uh, little fuzzy dead cat things that don't work like dead cats. The sound gets in from around the edges, I think, but it doesn't matter because they fall off within a second of putting them on. Whoever whoever engineered this, he probably also engineered the the telescope that I took apart right before. Yeah, this thing clips into these little, tiny little divots like that. It's like a little hat on it and they stay on there until, well, they stay on quite well, apparently. As soon as you put this on and, and, and actually start using it, something will touch it and it'll fall off. Right now, then I can't even get it off. So forget what I said, these, these are very good and these apparently are permanent, these fuzzy things. I'll leave it on there. So that's nice, $200, but it's a lot for a Christmas present in my house. In fact, that's 200 Christmas presents in my house. The next thing I use rarely, but when I do, it's, it comes in really handy. It's this little thing, it's, a, it's another road and it's not, I don't have a road thing and road doesn't, believe me, road doesn't give me anything. Uh, I, I buy all my, my sound equipment um, and uh, I bought this thinking that this little uh, uh, directional microphone that fits on the hot shoe uh, would be a good thing to use outdoors kind of for vlogging videos when I wanted higher quality sound than I was getting with the little square labs and didn't want to wear a, a lab mic. But I, 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 I've not learned how to use it well enough to get sound that I think is, is uh, uh, something I want to put in my videos, to be honest. Uh, I believe that it will, I believe that it can because I know a lot of creators use this to great results. Uh, I think it's probably just a matter of me getting more familiar with it and using it more. But certainly, this is a this is a good company. I think Rode, their Australian company, uh, yeah, they're mass market and their stuff's not particularly you know fancy schmancy. But I have yet to have a, a piece of equipment from them that I thought was just rubbish. Uh, and that's what you're you're up against. A lot of the stuff that's out there is just rubbish. Uh, this is not. Uh, even though there are a lot of people who you know love to hate on road, um, probably because of their success, uh, but uh, yeah, they're successful for a reason. Their stuff's affordable uh, and it works, and uh, yeah, I've been happy with it. All right, the the next one is again a road. This is the the microphone that I use for uh, for my podcast. This is a heavy. Uh, Puppy. This is the Procaster from um, from Rode, and it's a, a broadcast microphone, and I love it. And it sounds rich, and um, it really I, I love what it does to to my voice anyway. But I don't use it in my videos because you have to have this thing halfway down your throat when you're talking. I mean, really, it's talking almost touching the, the microphone. And I know that that would you know, upset you if you couldn't see every wrinkle in my face. Now, there are those that would argue, well, blocking a fairly large portion of your face would not be an issue for us, Alan, they would say. And I understand that, believe me. 
but it it puts me off. Um, it does. It distracts me trying to peek around the side of the microphone because yeah, I just can't get used to it. So it, this is when I'm not doing camera stuff. I have this this on because really I'm serious. You have to be right up, almost talking. Oh, that's what it is. It doesn't smell good. It's probably all that talking right into it. Anyway, where were we? Uh, the main microphone, the one, the one that I recommend enthusiastically, and and completely and without reservation. It's my favorite microphone, and uh, it doesn't doesn't make any sense that it would be because it's an inexpensive um, XLR based dynamic. Uh, a shotgun microphone, kind of a shotgun microphone. Normally shotgun microphones are used when you want to get sound very directionally. So you want to get sound from my mouth, but you don't want sound from the sides. You don't want sound from the back. And that's what a, a shotgun mic is. And the longer the shotgun is, the longer the tube is, the more specific and directional it can be. So the microphone that I ended up choosing for my studio was based on the fact that my house is very noisy. It is surrounded by houses, several of which are always doing some construction. Uh, there's a road outside the door. It's just noisy and the house creaks and it's full of echoes and the air conditioner and everything. So I wanted something that would not gather all of that sound. Um, when I'm using this big microphone, uh, I need to... Put my, I have a little tiny cubby that I go into to record that doesn't have any reflective surfaces and it's what you'd call a treated space, except it's really not. It's just got blankets hanging from the ceiling. Uh, but in, in here, where it's, it's echoey, uh, I need to really have the, the microphone focus on my mouth. So it's right here. It's right, just right out of your line of, of sight above the halfway between the camera and me. And I love the sound of this microphone more than any other. It sounds more like me. So this is the AT for Audio Technica 875R. And it's a, an, a video production microphone. It's made for basically what I'm using it for, which is recording digital video. It's, it's specifically made in this small form factor so that it'll fit on a, a camera or a, a, a a uh, video recorder and not get in the way. I use mine on a boom pole uh, on a on a C stand. I've had this and used it in over 300 videos without a problem. It's been dropped. Um, it's been trodden upon. It doesn't uh, take any batteries. It uses phantom power only, uh, which means it um, uh, it runs off the power that it gets through the XLR cable now. I don't know enough to know why the XLR is so much better than the, the little um, kind of uh, uh, audio jack uh, plugs. It's got something to do with signal to noise ratio, I'm sure, but it's, it just sounds cleaner to me. It sounds more natural, more realistic. Uh, so I mentioned that to say that if you get this microphone, you also have to have XLR cables and you also have to have a recorder that will accept XLR inputs, the Zoom H5 does. And all I think all the Zooms above the H4 do. It's a permanently polarized condenser microphone and it has a fixed charge on the back plate, uh, which explains why it's not particularly expensive. And it is really a fraction of the cost of six, seven, eight hundred dollar uh, shotgun mics that you'll see from every company. This is just the, in the sweet spot for me. It's enough like a, a directional line uh, plus gradient type microphone that I know that it's going to specifically pick up my voice and not all the other garbage that's going on around. Uh, but it's also high quality. Uh, I love it. I couldn't. I could not be more enthusiastic about it. I've saved the best for last. I'm going to announce the winners of the telescope explosion competition. This was more fun than I expected. Last night, I took a break from editing and I came through here to count the telescope parts. I take it nobody wants this telescope to put back together. I, I did wash every single piece of it though. 
Right off the bat, we've got something here that I could take down even further because there are two big brass bushings in the book, and they came out. Sorry about that. Three. One piece. Four. Five. Seven. That's the mirror. It's terrible. It doesn't have any shiny stuff on it. Um, oh, I've forgotten my numbers. We count this as one, but that's problematic because I've forgotten what number we're on. Two, three, nine, seven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, twenty-one, thirty-one, thirty-two, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three. You know, I'm going to have to start over because I don't think that was 55. And there's too much stuff at all left in here. There's, there's whole lenses in here that we haven't taken apart. These fancy lenses are magic anyway, so uh, well, that was not magic anyway. Oh look, there's a little metal do lolly for putting the lens straight at the end, and then you saw that lens was a little. That's an itty bitty little lens. So now I'm going to count, and I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to count out loud and go all the way through. One, two, uh, eight. 20, 21, 24, 30. 337 pieces in that telescope. I stand by that. That's accurate. 337 or 336 and a tiara. I have an uncommonly big head. It's shaped funny. I think it was a forceps injury from when I was like just zero old being born. I think I had a hard time coming through the birth canal. Hardly surprising, really. So this morning, the first thing I did was uh, gather up all of the, the answers from uh, the first 24 hours. And uh, I've got a few notes that I'd like to share with you. Uh, Messrs. Uh, Chantius, Stein, Marcellus, and Hagen, and Sisk, the, the law firm, I presume, with 1,865, 1,125, 2,551, 1,478, uh, and 2,315. I should have told you guys, no hand grenades. This it has to be taken apart with hand tools, not an axe. So they're too high. Uh, Dog Walker 13, you almost made it to this list, but you weren't, you didn't break the thousand mark. And honestly, Dog Walker 13 didn't sound like the name of the sixth lawyer in that firm. Chantius, Stein, Marcellus and Hagen, Sisk and Dog Walker 13. I think it would lower the tone of the firm. Honestly. Mr. Lucas, Dr. Wheeler, there is no such thing as half a part or 0.7 parts. There's just a part or there's not a part. A one or a zero. Think like a computer. It'll do you good. Mr. Nelson, the meaning of life plus a zero is a very interesting way to get a fairly close answer, but it's wrong. He obviously asked that, uh, that Siri person, um, is that the computer person that lives in my phone? Asked them what the meaning of life was because the answer to that is 42 and then he just added a zero, which is actually good thinking. 
Alanis and John D, buy a screwdriver. If you have a screwdriver, you'll get much more parts out of a telescope than that. Uh, Debbie Hartman, I want to know what dragon boating is. Jeff Holmes has a brother. Jeff, you said your brother uh, makes my brother look like a genius, yet you came up with a number that gets you into the honorable mention category. Uh, so I think you, you're selling your brother short. I don't think he's as big an idiot as you think he is. On the other hand, Hank, your brother, he's a total idiot. Um, he dismantled his telescope, the exact same telescope, and came up with twice as many pieces as I did. And then it turns out he accidentally dismantled a toaster with it. Now, how do you accidentally dismantle a toaster and a telescope at the same time? But it does explain the 737 parts. I don't want to be hasty uh, in talking about Jim Sewell's brother, who has the exact same telescope and took it apart and then counted every piece and came up with a number about 100 too low. I don't want to automatically call him an idiot because of his dissection of the telescope. It might be that he just isn't good at counting. He might have dyslexia or he might just be an idiot. Philip Atkinson, you took a very aggressive approach and including the mouse was a, a clever technique, but you're so many parts short that even if the mouse had been a skeleton, you would still have been too short. So good thinking, no cigar. Well, nobody's getting any cigars. I'm not giving away cigars. I'm giving away, what am I giving away? Pixels. And I'm giving them away to five telescopic savants. And one in particular who gets a special prize. So who are these? Who are these genius people? First of all, the honorable mentions, by the way, Per Rosenhav uh, was only 50 off. So was Jeff Holmes and his idiot brother. Uh, Brian Leeming, you were only off 37. And uh, Ingolf Kunz, 59 over. Now, let's talk about the winners. There are five of them, and it was pretty clear. In fifth place, with 25 too few parts, Dunny Monster, 312. Well done, well done you, 25 too few. At 17 parts too few, 320, Taduce. I hope that's how you pronounce your name, but congratulations. Number three, at 13 parts too many, Alan Lyle. Well done, Alan, congratulations. You win the bronze medal and one of these. And Roland P, only four, off four parts. Which four parts did you count twice? Over by four. Well done, Roland. And unbelievably, I mean, really unbelievably, you, I fell out of my chair when I saw this this morning. 337 parts is how many parts were in that telescope. Every single, I've counted them thrice. Ian James, 337. You nailed it. Good for you. Good for you. I am. I was so thrilled to see that. There is a famous author named Ian James uh, in the UK. If that's you and you want, want, want this thing, you're not getting it because you can afford your own one because you write books all the time. Oh, I'll send it to you anyway. Now, if you're one of these five, Ian Rowland, Taduce, Alan, or Dunny Monster, you need to send me an email you have to know my email address, because I don't. <laughs> no, what is it? Contact at alanwallsphotography.com. If you have a real name, like a human name that human parents gave you, put the name down so that they don't try, the post office doesn't try to send it to a monster, basically. Send me your name and address, and I guess a telephone number. That would be good, or an email address. That'll be, that'll be fine to contact at alanwallsphotography.com. The winners, these, these guys, and I will make sure that these get dispatched to you post haste. Ian, I owe you a butterfly box, which means I'm gonna have to make it. But I thought it would be a cool opportunity to show people what that is. You're, you're, Ian, you're gonna be getting your own. 
I have a very, very rough prototype. It's basically a box that has windows in all four sides, very specifically placed. And you place your butterfly wing on a very flat surface on a microscope slide and you position it underneath the hole. And your flashes, depending on how you set up your light, are gonna come from one or two sides. Usually just from the front is fine. And depending on how you position the slide, this allows the light to cut right across the top of the, of the upturned um, scales and gives lovely, rich, deep three-dimensionality and, and lights up the colors without letting any stray light up into the, to the lens. Thank you to Apexel for sponsoring the uh, giveaway and thank you to everybody who entered. It was a lot of fun. And congratulations again to Roland, to Deuce, Alan, Dunny, and of course, Ian James. Congratulations. And I'll see you guys on the sixth day of Christmas tomorrow. Thank you.